In art, Prajnaparamita is much less of an abstract concept and much more of a female goddess. So Prajnaparamita, as a personified uh, deity, goes back a, a long way. And the majority of art we have is actually early. It's actually end of the first millennium, beginning of the second millennium. A lot of the Himalayan and Tibetan material is uh, 11th, 12th, 13th century. And there's very little art that's uh, that's made in the present. What we do have is we have some initiation cards, Tsakali, um, and there are a few paintings. And Prajnaparamita represented in religious traditions, really we're looking at the Drikung tradition where we can find Prajnaparamita at the top of the, of the uh, field of accumulation. Uh, we can also find Prajnaparamita represented in, in paintings of the, the Shiche and uh, Chu traditions uh, where she plays a role. So to understand um, the, the main topics, we really have to look at um, just general description and iconography. Now in terms of, of Prajnaparamita, we know that she comes out of the Prajnaparamita literature of Mahayana Buddhism. She is a personification of wisdom, um, also described as the mother of all Buddhas. In terms of iconography, we don't have very many forms. We generally have uh, four kind of forms that uh, that are uh, not always clear where they come from and why they're used in certain situations. So we, we really have, we have uh, a, a yellow form and a white form. Now, sometimes the white form has two arms, sometimes four. The yellow form, likewise, two arms or four. This is the basic kind of uh, iconography, uh, physical description we have. There's no special mount for uh, Prajnaparamita. Uh, she can be on a lion-supported throne or some other. We do find uh, Prajnaparamita represented at the center of some mandalas. Now, these mandalas are actually medicine Buddha mandalas, where there is a convention uh, to sometimes place Prajnaparamita at the center and to move Medicine Buddha uh, to be one of the eight surrounding Buddhas. Uh, this, is, this is really an artistic uh, convention rather than a, 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 a for practice. It's a recognition of the importance of Prajnaparamita. And often in the past, these mandalas, uh, which generally have 51 or 53 deities, and the Prajnaparamita in the middle, they were often confused and thought to actually be a Prajnaparamita uh, mandala rather than just a juxtaposition, a moving of uh, between the Medicine Buddha and uh, the Prajnaparamita. Now, in terms of studying the, the art, it really has to be divided into, into two kinds of topics. The first is uh, two-dimensional, um, two-dimensional objects which are paintings and and book illuminations and the reason for this is just because there's so many book illuminations of a Prajnaparamita uh, not so many paintings uh, uh, in terms of scroll work paintings then we look at three-dimensional uh, art and then we have uh, some sculpture the majority the vast majority of the sculpture is early it's in the the uh, first half of, of the second millennium. And then we have book covers. It is very popular to have uh, uh, Prajnaparamita carved onto book covers, especially when there are so many um, uh, texts of the Prajnaparamita sutras. So Prajnaparamita as a personification, as a one-faced two-armed or one-faced four-armed deity is very popular, a uh, very popular subject for the wood carving on book covers. And really the last topic would be uh, looking at regions, styles, and periods. And then these, of course, will follow the, just the standard um, uh, region, styles, and periods for, for other uh, art subjects, other figurative art and whatnot. 
Just an introduction into Prajna Paramita. Press the like button if you found this uh, video useful. You can subscribe, you can share, and you can also help support the work we do by joining HAR on Patreon.